Piano Disc Calibrate is a free app available from the iTunes Store and is used by Piano Disc technicians to calibrate and adjust the Piano Disc system. The Piano Disc Calibrate app can be used to adjust the IQ in the Silent Drive HD2. However, it's not for calibration of a standalone IQ. If you're using a standalone IQ, you should still use the front scroll wheel to make adjustments and calibrations. Calibration can be done completely wirelessly, and this time we'll be using the Silent Drive HD2's built-in MIDI connection and Bluetooth audio connection to do the calibration. Let's get started. First, you'll need to make sure that your iPad is connected to the Silent Drive HD2. Click on Settings and Bluetooth and double check that your PD Silent Drive BT Audio is connected. Now that audio is connected, let's get started and open the Calibrate app. Touch the icon and then in the upper right hand corner you'll see a Bluetooth icon. Touch that and then select PD Silent Drive BT MIDI. Great, we're connected. You'll see the light in the upper right hand corner turn green. That means we have a MIDI connection between the iPad and the Silent Drive. In this case, we're connected to the Silent Drive HD2 using both Bluetooth MIDI and audio. If you're going to be playing the system in standard mode, this is a fine way to calibrate. Normally, we don't recommend having audio and MIDI connected simultaneously. If you'll be using professional mode, we suggest that you connect your Bluetooth adapter or AirPlay adapter now and calibrate that way instead. Now that we're connected, touch IQ to begin. In this interface, there's many different parameters that control how the piano plays. Now we're controlling the internal hardware-based IQ in the Silent Drive HD2. I'd like to point out something about the user interface. On the left-hand side of the screen, all of those parameters apply to playback at the lowest possible volume, whereas the right-hand side of the screen is for adjusting parameters when the piano is playing at its maximum volume. This way, the piano knows the settings for the minimum volume and maximum and can interpolate the middle. So on a lot of these controls, you'll see two dots, and the dots can be moved back and forth. The left dot is for minimum playback calibration, and the right dot is for maximum playback calibration. Now, the first parameter you'll see is automatic volume. Automatic volume is Piano Disc's patented technology that makes the Piano Disc IQ work with any music playback device. Whether it's an iPad, an Android phone, or a whole house audio music player, IQ technology can automatically adjust the piano intensity to match the music you're playing. So on your iPad, when you turn down the volume, the piano gets softer. And when you turn it up, the piano volume is adjusted to match. Now, most people are gonna to wanna to keep automatic volume turned on because it's a great feature. But there are certain cases where you'd wanna turn that off. And we'll cover those in the end after we're familiar with all the controls. Now let's talk about the music player volume range. Piano Disc is unique in that it does work with any music player and every music player is a little bit different. The output of my iPad may be significantly different than the audio output level of my Android phone. And so we've got to tell the IQ technology what the output capabilities of your device are. Once it knows, it can adjust the piano intensity to match your device perfectly. So the first thing we're going to do is play our music device at a low volume and then a high volume and set the minimum and maximum levels. However, there's a little more to it than just that. When we're setting the minimum level, we don't want the level where the device is barely playing and you can hardly hear the accompaniment output from the speakers because that's too soft to balance with the piano's audio. So we want to select a minimum audio level that actually sounds good with the minimum piano playback. So as you're setting this minimum, keep in mind that the piano will be playing at its lowest possible volume. And if the piano is drowning out the audio, we may need to set the minimum level of our device a little bit higher. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna adjust the volume of the iPad all the way down. 
Then we're gonna gradually increase the volume until the accompaniment audio sounds like it would probably match the minimum piano playback volume. Then we'll touch the min button. Now, when you touch min, what it does is it tells the IQ that this is the value, this is the volume level where the piano will be played at its minimum. So whether it's on the first volume bar of your iPad or the fifth volume bar, it doesn't really matter. The piano will still be playing at its absolute minimum volume as soon as you press the min button. What we're trying to do is get the accompaniment audio to a substantial enough level that the balance between the audio and accompaniment at minimum volume sounds correct. And we'll start the test song by pressing play. Okay, the accompaniment is playing, but it's far too low a volume to be a suitable accompaniment for the piano. So I'll keep adjusting the iPad just a little bit higher. There, that sounds about right. Let's press min, and when I do, you'll hear the piano start playing at its minimum value. Okay, the piano's still drowning out the accompaniment a little bit, so I'm gonna adjust this one or two levels higher and press min again. There, that's a great balance. Let's move on to the maximum volume setting. So now we're gonna adjust the iPad to its maximum volume. Okay, once I got to maximum, you notice I pressed the maximum button. Now what that did is it set the internal IQ so that it knows the maximum audio output of your music player. So now the IQ knows where the minimum volume is, where the piano should start playing, and also where the maximum is, where the piano should be playing at its loudest possible level. Next let's adjust the piano volume output range. This next control defines the minimum and maximum piano output. It makes sense that you would start with one and end with a hundred, giving you the full range of piano dynamics. But that's not exactly what we want in this case, and let me show you why. Let's start by adjusting the piano's maximum volume point. Now, we're going to turn the volume all the way down and gradually increase it. Now, I want you to listen to the piano volume as it increases, especially compared to the balance of the audio accompaniment. At some point, the audio accompaniment will continue to rise in volume, but the piano won't get any louder. That's because every piano in every configuration is a little bit different. So we want to determine what that point is and tell the IQ that at that point, the piano is playing at its maximum output level. Let's give it a try. Now, since the accompaniment is connected directly to the audio output of the iPad, it will continue to rise in volume. But the piano leveled off at about 80%. So we're going to adjust the piano maximum volume to 80%. What this does is it gives us a better match between the volume curve of the piano and the volume curve of the audio accompaniment. Now, as we increase the volume, you'll notice it stays balanced, and so you have good balance between the piano and the accompaniment throughout the dynamic range. Let's give it a shot. Great. Both the piano and the accompaniment sound good, and the ratio of loudness between the two stays the same throughout the entire dynamic range of the iPad. That's what we're looking for. Now let's talk about the accompaniment volume range. Accompaniment looks a little bit different than the other controls, and that's because it starts at 100 and goes to zero. Well, why is that? That's because the accompaniment is a preamplifier that's built into the hardware of the IQ. So at minimum volume, the audio signal needs the most boost in order to match the volume of the piano. But as you turn up the volume of the iPad, the boost it needs to match the volume of the piano is less and less. So at maximum volume, you really don't need any boost. 
That's why the accompaniment boost starts at 100 and ends at zero. So to best illustrate that, let's show you what happens if we don't use that feature. I'm going to slide the minimum volume accompaniment dot all the way to the right. Now in doing this, I've basically turned off the preamplifier. Some people might want to do this anyway, especially if you're using your own equipment and it has different audio characteristics. But in this case, we're trying to illustrate what happens to the balance if we don't have that accompaniment boost, especially when we're playing at the quietest possible volumes. So we'll turn down the volume of the iPad and try our test song again. Okay, you may have noticed that the accompaniment is much quieter, and this time we need to move the iPod's volume to about 50% before it's even a suitable level for the minimum piano playback. And so to give ourselves a little bit wider range, what we're going to do is turn on that accompaniment boost and set it to 100. That means that when the piano is playing at its quietest possible level, the boost for the accompaniment is at its maximum level. That way, the two work together even better. Let's hear it again. Great, that's just what we wanted. The piano and audio remain balanced when the piano is playing at a low volume. But what about the high volume? What about when the piano is playing at maximum volume? Well, to illustrate what happens there, let's first set this right volume dot to 100. So in this case, we have the amplifier, that preamplifier volume boost, always enabled and always at 100%. So what's going to happen is that at the lower volume ranges, it sounds great. But as we get up in volume, you'll notice that the amplifier isn't helping anymore and it's starting to degrade the performance because the accompaniment gets too loud and even distorted. I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, the piano started out balanced with the accompaniment audio, but in the end, the accompaniment audio got a little out of control, and that's because we have the amplifier turned up all the way. So ideally, in most cases, you're going to want to have the accompaniment setting to 100 and 0. Now, in some cases, if you want to just turn off the preamplifier entirely, that's also possible. Just select that left dot and move it all the way to the right. Next, we'll talk about sync. Now, sync defines the synchronization between the piano playback and the background accompaniment. Now, it looks like there's only one dot on the screen, but in reality, there's two. Start by touching the dot and moving your finger to the right. You'll see that it separates from the left dot. Once again, there's two dots, one for low volume playback and one for high volume playback. We'll start by setting the low volume sync. So we'll turn the volume of the iPad all the way down and then begin playback. And as we raise the volume, we'll wait until the piano is playing at its minimum volume with the accompaniment, and then we'll check the sync and make adjustments as needed. Next, we'll adjust the maximum volume sync control using the right dot. We'll adjust the volume to 100% and then pay attention to the sync between the volume and the audio accompaniment. Let's give it a try.
that's about right. Now we've got our minimum volume sync set and our maximum volume sync set. Throughout the range of playback, your piano and accompaniment will remain in sync. Let's revisit that automatic volume feature we talked about at the beginning of the video. Automatic volume, again, is what controls the IQ technology that makes the piano play at the same volume level as your music player. So as your music player increases in volume, the piano does as well. I mentioned that most people will want to keep automatic volume on, but what happens if you turn it off and why would you want to do it? Let's try turning it off for a minute. What you'll see is that each of the parameters, piano, accompaniment, and sync, each have individual adjustment now and can be set at a specific level. Now, this is useful if you have a fixed display, like maybe at a trade show or on the showroom of a dealer's floor. In that case, you want a fixed volume level that never changes. So you don't want anybody to accidentally turn your piano up too loud or too soft or to make any adjustment. And in this case, a fixed volume output makes sense. By setting the piano, accompaniment, and sync to specific levels, you can guarantee that the playback will always be at the same volume and sync. Now, this comes in handy when you have a fixed display, such as at a dealer's showroom floor or a trade show. It also comes in handy when connecting to the system via the optional Toslink connector. That's because digital devices don't use volume control and are always playing at 100%. Obviously, you don't want your piano always playing at maximum volume. So if you do have the optional Toslink adapter installed, you'll want to use the PianoDisc Calibrate app to adjust your piano volume and accompaniment volume to reasonable levels that make sense for your environment. Again, automatic volume is typically left on. For these specific scenarios, turning off automatic volume gives you precise control of the piano and guarantees that nothing will change. That's why you might want to turn it off. But for most users, leave automatic volume control turned on. Now that you know how to calibrate the Silent Drive HD2's internal hardware-based IQ, it's important not to forget to recalibrate every so often. Typically, this takes place at tunings. Next time you go to a customer's house for a tuning, it's a good idea to recheck those IQ calibration settings. Also, if you notice any kind of sync or balance issues, it's another time to make sure that those are correct. Anytime you change the music player, it's important to set the minimum and maximum volume levels again, because every music player is different and the volume range changes from player to player. Using the PianoDisc Calibrate app to calibrate the Silent Drive HD2's internal IQ makes it easy. You don't have to crawl under the piano and everything can be done wirelessly. We hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about how to get the most out of your PianoDisc system.